And then Mahaprabhu became absorbed in the mood of Varana Devi. And this way he was like jumping all around Murari to the house. So in this way we see that um, um, Varana Devi does this. He sniffs all these Anathas out and he makes the platform ready. Platform ready, the heart ready. For what? For the appearance of Nityananda Prabhu. No. So in this way we should not neglect even the other incarnations also. Like in yesterday we were hearing in the Harikatha that Brahma, he was thinking that there should be one particular incarnation who's only, who's a condensed form of mercy, who's a condensed form of compassion. In Guru Ashtakam we say, no, this Tranaya uh, Karunya Ghana Ghana Atvam. He is the Ghana Murti of this Karunya, of this compassion. So Nityanand Prabhu is like this Ghana Murti of this, of combined incarnation of all the uh, avatars of Bhagavan, his plenary portions, his Swayam Vaiva Prakash, Vaiva Vilas, any form you can possibly imagine, the sum total of all that compassion is Nityananda Prabhu. Oh. And he appeared yesterday. So there we see that in um, normally when Guru speaks on Nityananda Prabhu, he says that how even Lakshman became angry. No. In the Ramayana we see that when Bharat was coming with his uh, army to meet Sri Ramchandra at Chitrakut, Lakshman became so angry. He said, look at Bharat, he's coming here, how dare he come here? And Dasharat just see how he is. Being controlled by his wife, he sent you away here. And now his son is coming to kill you. And you fight him, he said. And then Ram said, don't do like this. Or else you'll regret later, he said. And calm Lakshman down. And Lakshman anyhow, he calmed himself down. Then Bharat, when he fell at the feet of Ram, Lakshman was so ashamed of himself. And then this way we see that in the Ramayana also, how Lakshman became angry. He's even at other times also, like when Ram told, told Lakshman to put Sita there and the, uh, in, uh, to you know, perform that ritual of the sacrifice there, the shaka entered the fire, then again Lakshman became angry there. Yeah. And we see in Balram also, he became angry so many times also. Yeah. Balram, we see like how angry he became at Rukmi. Rukmi, his elder brother, Rukmi, he killed Rukmi right there. And we see how even when he went to ask, uh, Anirudh had been taken prisoner by Duryodhan because Anirudh had fallen in love with Duryodhan's daughter, Usha. So anyhow, he wanted to marry her, so Duryodhan had kept in there. And then Duryodhan, he spoke very harsh words to Balram, saying, oh, now the Shu wants to go on the throne, something like that, very bad thing, he said. And immediately Balram did not say anything. He started pulling all of Hastinapur into the Yamuna there. So this way, anyhow, he was pacified. And we see when, when Bhim and Duryodhana were fighting, anyhow, Balram, when he saw that Bhim killed Duryodhana in an unjust way, became angry. So this way, Balde, Lakshman, they all become angry, but Nityanthu is never angry. Never. Rather, he performs these operations. Like yesterday we heard in Katha, no? Ramachandra Khan, what he did? Nityanthu, he came and he said, our entire village will be destroyed. So one may think, oh, how can he say this? How can he be Param Dayamai when his entire family was destroyed? No, that is also an operation actually. That is a major operation. Why? Because we we don't see what happened later. For all we know, Ramchandra Khan may have taken birth in a family of a devotee in his next life, being born as a Vaishnava, that again he can start over again. No, because Vaishnavas are very merciful. Gurudev used to say that so many disciples of Swami Maharaj, they fell down, they fell away, he said. But he said those of them who have the conception that my Prabhupada is pure, he said though they, though they still have a chance, he said. Those became utterly, utterly offensive. He said, even they'll have a chance sometime in their lives, he said. Because Vaishnava never accepts anyone's offenses. So one day or the other, they will have a chance again. So in this way, we only see that he performed a major operation on Ramchandra Khan. And Ramchandra Khan, anyhow, he was delivered from that sinful body. And we see he also performed a minor operation also. Gurudev mentions this in class. We see that when uh, Shivananda Sain had to arrange some places for Nikhayamu Prabhu and his devotees, They'll be visiting Mahaprabhu for the time of Chaturmas, you know, every four months they'll be visiting Mahaprabhu. So Shivanand Sen was a little late in arranging this accommodation. So Nithamdu kicked him down on the head and he said, Oh, may, your, may all your children die, may your family be destroyed. He, he said something like that. And Shivanand Sen's wife was crying so much, Oh, how can he say that? We already have two sons and he's saying this. And then we hear that Shivanand Sen's nephew, Sri Kanta, he was very upset when he heard Nithamdu say this. So he went to meet Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu sensed what happened. And he said, oh, what happened? Still he asked. So he's saying like this, Nityananda Prabhu, that everything will be destroyed. Then Mahaprabhu said, look, whatever Nityananda says is full of, like, inconceivable auspiciousness. Don't doubt his words. 
And soon enough, what happened? Nothing happened to his family. And we see that, in fact, a great devotee was born to them. Kavi Kandapur was born to them. So, return to anything he does is like only full of nitya, nitya ananda, eternal happiness, bliss. So, yesterday we heard like how uh, Nitya Ananda Prabhu, we heard like how Sudarshan Chakra, he was uh, Lord Shiva when Parvati had, when Sati had given up a body, he was carrying a body and dancing in like anger and rage, and the entire world was like being destroyed. And then Sudarshan Chakra, he cut uh, Sati Devi's body into 51 pieces. So every place where that piece fell, it became known as Tarapit. Like we see, there's a Tarapit here in Mathura also, no? near Bhuteshwar Mahadev. One piece fell there also. So similarly, one piece fell there also in Ekashatra So we hear that Harai Pandit and Padmavati Devi, they were from uh, Mithila Desh, Nepal. So then we uh, hear that when they came from Nepal, they came here to Ekashatra Dham. Why? Because here, Sudarshan, he came here and he wanted to be freed of this sun, of this sin, of cutting Sati Devi's body into so many pieces. So therefore, when they performed this Abhishek on Sudarshan, we, all his sins were washed away. And as these sins were being washed away, all the entire land became very infertile, barren. Why? Right? Because of this sin. No, like we see nothing grows even now in Kurukshetra now also. It's all barren land. It was like blood. So then, anyhow, there was only one Kunda there, in which the remnants of the water that had been Sudarshan Shankara was present. So therefore, Hawaii Pandit and Padmavati Devi, they went there. And then they were told that they'll have a very beautiful son. And he'd be born, the entire land would be uh, fertile again. Like, the entire place would become like Vaikunta. So then soon enough, we hear that uh, Nityananda Prabhu was born to them. You know? And um, we, like we heard that Leela yesterday, like about Bankim Rai and everyone. Bankim Rai, Bankarai actually means... Uh, Banka means Krishna and Rai means Srimati Radhika. So actually Bankara is a combined power of Radha and Krishna, which is who? It is Mahaprabhu himself. So in one way Mahaprabhu himself had appeared there also along with Nityananda Prabhu. And we heard that Leela is you know, about Kotasur. Kotasur or Bakasur. Like we hear that um, when the Pandavas were sent by uh, the Kauravas to this uh, house of wax, you know, and the house of black, so that they could burn it down, then Anyhow, they escaped because of Vidura and then Vyasadev sent them to Eka Chakra. He told them to stay there. So then we hear that there was one demon, Pakasur or Kotasur, and then uh, every day they'd be feeding him so much. So now it was the time for the Brahmin who was hosting the Pandavas. His name was, uh, um, and, uh, anyhow, this Brahmin, uh, it was his turn. So then he was thinking, oh, now I have to sacrifice, sacrifice myself for the family. And then the son said, no, I'll go. So then Bhim said, I'll go. Kunti said, let Bhim go. So then anyhow, Bhim, we know what happened. He went and he defeated Pakasu. But then Arjuna was a little scared. So he was thinking he, he released one Nagapash, this weapon of this snake weapon. And then he told the snake that kill this demon, or else he might be, or he might have, he's trying to kill my elder brother. But then by that time, Bhim had already killed Pakasu. So then when this Nagapash was returning to Arjuna, he said, now what should I do? You released me already. And Arjuna said, okay, stay here in this one place and don't disturb anyone. Whichever animal comes here, you can eat that animal. So then this way, uh, no villager would go there. So once Nityanandru was going there, and then everyone told him, don't go there. He said, there's a very dangerous snake there. And then Nityanandru went and he saw the snake. He said, who are you? And the snake related all its history. So then what Nityanandru do? He took one earring and he told the snake to go inside one hole. And he covered that place with this earring. And that earring, that it grew so much in size, it became like a big stone. Therefore, the place is called Kundali Tala, even now in Eka Chakra Gram. And the place where the Pandav was still, it's called Pandav Tala, there, in this place. So, this way, there are many past times related to Bankim Rai also. It is said that Bankim Rai, along with Nityanand Prabhu and all the villagers, they were plucking out weeds for in Harai Pandit's land. And then, once all the villagers, they wanted to take some break, so they all went inside the house. And then Bankim Rai, he himself performed the work of 40 people and he plucked out all the weeds. And when he plucked out all the weeds, and then he threw them and made a big mound, made a big heap of all these weeds. And everyone was thinking, who did all this? And someone said, oh, Bankim Rai did this. And then they all went looking for him, but they couldn't find him anywhere. And then everyone was weeping so much for him. Where is, where is Bankim Rai? Where is Bankim Rai? So then he said, anyhow, I'll appear as Daru Brahma. And then you can 
established me as a deity. So to this day, he's there, present in that form as Taru Brahman in Eka Chakra. And it's that deity in which Nityan Prabhu he uh, disappeared. He entered into that deity there, no? Into the deity there. So in this way, we heard also yesterday, like how there was this one sannyasi. He came and he told Radhai Pandit, saying, Hello, can you promise to give me what you, I ask you for? Radhai Pandit was very scared. What is he asking? Then he said, Oh, he'll give me your son. So then Radhai Pandit thought, Oh, just as Vishwamitra came and asked for Ram and Lakshman for Maharaj Dasharat, well, the same thing has happened to me. So then we hear that he was um, asked to give his son. So the Vaishnavas, they mentioned one nice uh, fact yesterday. They said it was actually Naradrishi himself who inspired this sannyasi to come and take Nityananda Prabhu away. Because now Nityananda was only there in Eka Chakra. No, no, he was giving so much happiness to all the people there, performing all his past times. But now he had to give his mercy everywhere. So therefore, on the inspiration of Naradrishi himself, this sannyasi came. And he took Nityananda Prabhu away. So that sannyasi was like Lakshmi Tirupa himself. And then he took Nityananda Prabhu away. And we see that Nityananda Prabhu, also when he was in Eka Chakra, he found all his leelas with his boys. Like Ram Lila, Krishna Lila. And these are not just dramas. No, we must not think they were just some dramas. Rather, like when Nitan was playing the part of Lakshman, that he, Lakshman himself manifested within him. He is the root of all avatars also. No? He manifested within him. Like we see in, during the Ras Lila, when the gopis, in separation from Krishna, they started reenacting all the pastimes of Krishna. Like one gopi pretended she was lifting Giriraj. And one gopi pretended that she was sucking the breast of Putana. So here the question arises that, oh, how can this Vijati Abhav enter into these Leelas? No. Like, how can Putana ever enter within the gopis? And how can one gopi behave like Putana? Can, can that ever be acceptable that one gopi will behave like Putana and one more gopi will suck her breast? So there Gurudevi explains that Kavi Karnapur Goswami has mentioned that actually Yogamaya herself created one form of Putana there. Because no gopi can behave like Putana. Yoga is a manifested one form of Putana there. And similarly, when Krishna performed, when one gopi was performing this deal of dancing on Kaliya, lifting Giriraj, so which gopi can possibly act as Kaliya? It's not possible. No, so Kaliya himself manifested there. And then it is said Krishna himself, he entered within the gopis and he himself started dancing on the hoods of Kaliya. And Krishna himself lifted Giriraj by entering on the bodies of one of the gopis. Similarly, when Nityanandra was performing all his leelas with all his associates, uh, like when all the, there were some leelas where like some of these demons appeared, the demons really appeared then. It's not that some of his associates became the demons. No, there's like one past time when Lakshman was wounded by this, uh, by Indrajit's weapon, and then uh, they had to bring this uh, Sanjeevani booty, these medicinal herbs, you know, from this Gandamadan mountain. And Hanuman was bringing it back and then he came across this demon Kalnemi and he fought with Kalnemi. So can any associate of Nithyanandra act as Kalnemi? Is it possible? Because Vijati of how? So therefore Yogamaya himself created one form of Kalnemi. And then this Leela was performed there. Like Hanuman himself appeared within one, one associate of his and, and this demon was delivered this way. So this way that, that was Avesh, so much absorbed. That those leelas really took place, not just dramas. No. Like dancing on Kaliya, all those leelas took place there. But now he had to leave Eka Chakra ground. So then when he left Eka Chakra, he, he went everywhere with Lakshmi Bhakti Kirta there. And visiting all these different pilgrimage places and, and making them wholly auspicious again. And then we hear that he met Madhavendra Puri also. So Madhavendra Puri is like his Siksha Guru, Nitanan Pro Siksha Guru. They're actually god brothers. But Nityan Prabhu considered him to be his Siksha Guru. So we know, no, Madhavendra Puri, he's like the, uh, he's this, he's the first sprout of Prem. Anyone who he would, he would touch would become a Premi Bhakta. Like this Sonariya Brahmin in Mathura, when Mahaprabhu came, with, came to me, came to Mathura, started dancing in ecstasy with him. Just touched him. So similarly, if just by touching one person, that person becomes so empowered, then what can be said about the disciples of Madhavendra Puri? Like Ishwar Puri, Sudhanan Puri, Ranga Puri, Brahmanan Bharati, no, Keshwanan Puri. All these disciples have served him with their life and soul. So how much more he has empowered them. Even Advaita Acharya's Madhavendra Puri's disciples, Pundarik Vidyanati, all of them, no, even uh, this Raghupati Upadhyay also. When Mahaprabhu met at Arayal Gram, he was also a Madhavendra Puri's disciple. So Nithyan he went there and he honored him with so much love, with so much respect. 
No, that's why you honor. No, you honor everyone. You honor your Diksha Guru, your Siksha Guru, your Paprasha Guru, your Bhajan Guru, everyone. No. Like now the devotee is learning these focus. No, like that. What does Raghunath Das Goswami say? No. He says, Gurav Gurav Goste Goshta Leshu Sujane Pusurgane Samantra Shinambi Prajanuva Yeva Tanda Sharane Sadatamba Pitpa Kurum Puram Adhitavam Ayu Santa Prata Chattupi Kavi Ache Pitpa Pada. There what is he saying? Samantra Shri Namne and then there he says Gurav Goste Goshta Leshu. Gurav means the plural form. So one cannot even honor one's Diksha Guru and one's Siksha Guru. How will he even progress in Bhajan? Vritam Guru showed how to honor Madhavendra Puri there. And then he went to Ayodhya. And then he had Darshan there and then he came to Jagannath Puri. So he came to Jagannath Puri, that Vrindavan Das Thakur says, he had Darshan of, of who? He had Darshan of uh, Chaturbhiva, he says, Vrindavan Das Thakur. So what is the meaning of Chaturbhiva? Actually he had Darshan of uh, Sankasha, Manirudh, Pratyumna and Vasudev. Then, because we see that there, Baladev is actually Mool Sankarshan who is present there in Jagannath Puri. No, because Subhadra is also there. No, but still, like there's a verse in Chetan Chetan, no. Sabar Jangam Nadike Tar Murti, Sarvatra Hoy, Nija Ishtadevir Spurti. That one sees one's own Ishtadevin and doesn't see the external forms. But still, it can be the opposite also. It does not just mean Stavar Jangam Nadike Tar Murti. It can also mean Stavar, Dang, Stavar Jangam Deke Tar Murti, Sarvatra Hoy, Sarvatra Hoy Nija, De, Nija Ishtadevir Spurti. It can also mean that any form they see, they only see the Nishtadeva. No. Like Radharani, when she is seeing this uh, tamal tree on the clouds, she is only seeing Krishna there. Uh, in the trees, in the clouds. No. And Mahaprabhu would see the would see the ocean, he would think that was a uh, Yamuna. See Chanakpada, he was seeing his gold. So when Nityatru went there, Jagannath Puri, he did not see this. Like, even though the Chaturvi was present there, he only saw Prajan Vandan Shamsundar there. Just as Mahaprabhu saw him. And then we heard he came to Vrindavan, and there we heard how he heard this aerial voice that, oh, now your brother is, is born in a real home. And, and we heard that Leela yesterday also, that stone that Kansa used to break to kill the children of Deva King also there. Then this way when he came to Naudri, there Mahaprabhu he had a dream and he told all his devotees after they performed Sankirtan in Shiva's Thakur's house. Oh, I had a dream where one very effulgent personality who had one earring. Because Baladev Prabhu, he has one earring, not two, one. And he was sitting on a chariot. And everywhere he was going, he was asking, where is Nimai's house? Where is Nimai's house? 14, 15 times. And then when he came here, immediately he looked at me and, and then we embraced each other, he said. So this personality is here now. All of you go look for him. So then Shiva Stakur, Raja Stakur, they went looking everywhere. They even went to all those people who had previously criticized them so much. Everywhere they went, but they could not find them. And then we know that Nitaguru is hiding there in Nandana Chari Bhavan, where uh, Saran Goswami Maharaj's month is now. There, we know, when Mahaprabhu went there, he told Shiva Stakur to recite this verse. No? This Vara Pira Matavar Mahu Karnaya Karnikaram Bhita Pasa Kanaka Kapisham Raja and Dilcha Mangam. Andram Vayana Radara Suraya Purayam Kopa Pindai Vindaranyam Sopadaramana Pravisha Kita Kirti This is the, when the Gopas entering into the pasturing fields they were describing Krishna's beauty and then immediately Nidhantra and Mahaprabhu embraced each other and this was their first meeting No, this is, that is why uh, uh, in this way, that's why they called brothers not just because they were Krishna and Baladev but because he is the Sarup of Mahaprabhu now yesterday we heard, no, that Mahaprabhu is Bhakta Roop and Nityanandru is Bhakta Swarup. So Roop and Swarup are non-different. So in this way, like they are non-different from each other in one form. So in this way they embraced each other and then like we know all these leaders happened then. Nityanandru riding on crocodiles and everything. Then we hear also, no, the Shiva Stakur once, Mahaprabhu asked him that, Oh, what if Nityanandru is from another caste, but still you are keeping him inside your house? It's, it's not proper. But then Shiva Swami said, even if he goes to the house of a Yavani, Muslim lady's house, and even if the Yavani comes to my house, he says actually then in Chaitanya Mahabharata, the Yavani comes to my house and with Nityan Prabhu and destroys the entire purity of my house, still Nityan Prabhu, he is my, like, my Prabhu. And this is the truth, three times he said that. And Nityan Mahaprabhu was so happy with him. And we hear also that once, uh, Sachi Devi, she had a dream where, um, she told Nimai that, oh Nimai, 
you and Nityananda, both of you, you entered in the deity room and you started quarreling with my deities, Krishna and Baladev. Krishna and Baladev were saying that, oh, you don't know who we are and God and Nityananda were saying, you don't know who we are. And this way, Nityananda Prabhu told me to give him some prasad. So then Mahaprabhu said, yes, this is not just a dream, this is true, this is a fact. So now you feed Nityananda. Then just as Kaushalya would feed Ram and Lakshman and Yashoda would feed Krishna and Baladev, in the same way, Sachi Devi, she started feeling uh, Nityananda Prabhu and Mahaprabhu. And then we heard that Leela also, that Malini Devi, once this pot of ghee had been stolen away by a crow. So Nityananda Prabhu, anyhow, he brought this pot of ghee back. So then Malini Devi, she told Nityananda Prabhu, what is not possible for you? Previously, as Baladev, along with Krishna, you brought the dead son of your guru back. They brought the son of Sandipani Muni back now, from Yamalok. And as Anandashesh, you carry millions of universes on your head. And as Lakshman, you defeated even Indrajit, who was otherwise unconquerable. So what is not possible for you, Malini Devi said. Then once Mahaprabhu was with, was with Lakshmi Priya Devi there in his house, then Yogpeet, and Nitabhu, he came there. And Mahaprabhu, he took his own chatar and he covered him. And another time, Sachi Devi, she gave like five, five sweets of Sandesh to Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu ate one and he threw four away over the wall. And Sachi Devi said, what are you doing now? No, I have no other sweets to offer to you. Then Nityananda Prabhu said, don't worry, I'll bring them back. And while he was still sitting there in the same place, she went back to the kitchen, she saw that those four sweets of Sandesh were still there. And then she said, what am I saying? Is this a dream? What am I saying? And immediately Nityananda Prabhu came, fell at the feet of Sachi Devi and he, uh, and he started crying. And in this way we hear also that once Mahaprabhu again Nitanda was walking naked. And then Mahaprabhu took his turban, which is tied like his cloth, and then covered him. And then he, Nitanda's coffin was torn into many pieces. And Mahaprabhu gave one piece each to all the devotees. And he said, This is like a culture for every one of you. This is Nitanda's coffin. So keep this like a culture for all of you. So in this way we see all these different leaders happen there. No, even when Mahaprabhu took sannyas, he only told few, few devotees. Chandrasekhar Acharya, Galadhar Pandit, not even Galadhar Pandit, Chandrasekhar Acharya, Nidhan Prabhu, Haridas Thakur and others, not everyone. Because if he would have told the others, then they would have given up their lives and they would have died. Therefore, he only told some very few devotees. And then we hear all these different leelas also. The Nidhan Prabhu going everywhere. No, so no, running out fine. So this way, uh, Nidhan the Prabhu, who is he? He sankarsh, he sankarsh, and come to the shahi, garbo the shahi, japayo the shahi, shesha shesha and sakalasa, and he came back here, Rama Sharanam Mamastu. No, Sarutam and Rusam is himself said that even this Karna of the Sai Vishnu, from whom all the jivas manifest, Nitanpur is the source. Karbo Dakshai Vishnu, from whose navel Brahma manifests and manifests and who creates the 14 primary systems, he, Nitanpur is his root. And Shira Dakshai Vishnu, Paramatma, who is his root? Nitanpur is his root. And who is Shesha? Shesh is who keeps all the universes on his roots. Who is the source? Nityananda Prabhu is the source. And once Vishwamitra and Vashishtra, they went to Anand Shesh. And then Vishwamitra said, Oh, what is the greatest form of austerity? And then Anand Shesh said, Oh, anyone who can carry all these universes for him one moment, let me decide. And then Vishwamitra used all his austerities, the fruits of all his austerities, but he could not even, for one moment, he could not hold all the universes together. But then Vashishtra, very humbly, he said, at one moment of Sadhu Sandha I offer. And then Ananda Shesh gave all the universes to him and then anyhow, by the power of that one moment of Sadhu Sandha, he, uh, he could give. All the universes were like balanced. So how fortunate we are, we are not just getting one moment of Sadhu Sandha. We are getting days, you know, months, years of Sadhu Sandha, no? not just one moment of Sadhu Sandha. No? So therefore how thankful we must be to the Sadhus that they are giving us their association. So, so similarly, lastly, I just end with this, and uh, we see that even those associates who Mahaprabhu was neglecting, how much mercy they got from Mahaprabhu because of Nityananda Prabhu. Prataprabhu Maharaj, Mahaprabhu neglected him so many times, but Nityananda Prabhu said, no, you must give them mercy. And then anyhow, yeah, Mahaprabhu gave his chadar to him. And then we see even Kala Krishna Das also, no? Mahaprabhu rejected him, but Nityananda Prabhu said, no, you must accept him in your service again. And he also was. And even Dhamadar Pandit, the Paikas and Nityananda Prabhu. And even Chota Haridas also. Mahaprabhu apparently rejected him, but Nityananda Prabhu never rejected him. He accepted him. Therefore, Mahaprabhu was bound to accept him. Therefore, even after Chota Haridas gave up his body, he was singing for Mahaprabhu. Because of who? Because of Nityananda Prabhu. So, therefore, without Nityananda Prabhu, even Mahaprabhu's mercy cannot be known. So, it's such a wonderful uh, titi yesterday. 
This Titi yesterday, if even one dedicates even a little time, just by saying Nita Intai, or even just by doing a little Kirtan, and Nita will be so happy and bless him, given this ultimate auspiciousness. So today, Harai Pandit and Padmavati Devi are organizing this big feast and festival for the Vaishnavas. So we can only pray that um, we can, um, um, these glories of Nitya Prabhu, as spoken by the Vaishnavas, can, at least a drop can manifest in our hearts.
never imposing his will. He's always fulfilling all of his desires in every way. That's in the same way, Rajanda, Rajanda Nangana Jai Satchi Sula Hoytra Sai Balaram Hoyno Nithai. Rajanda Nangana Samasinda Krishna is Satchi Nangana Gaurahari. And Balaram is Nithai, Nithyananda Bho. So Nithyananda Bho, he came first. And we know that before the Lord advanced, then that time, his dham, his associates, everything was sent, they, they come before and they arrange everything to make everything very perfect for the Lord's pastime and service. But we should understand why Chaitanya, why Krishna came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We know that he had three desires, Radha, Krishna, Maya, Mani, Mahi, Krishna, Mahana, Daiva, Swadhyo, Yen, Arbhuta, Madhuri, Maha, Krishna, Maha, Diya, Saukyam Chasya Mar Anupavata Kittisham Vedi Loba Tad Bhavata Samanji Satchi Garbhav Sindhu Harindra He came to very to fulfill these three internal desires. This is his internal, primary internal reason. His secondary reason is what? Ragmark Bhakti Loki Parita Prachanam. Distributing Ragmark is, is external. It is a primary external reason but still it is external. It's external means it's for others. Internal means it's for himself. So Mahaprabhu wanted to distribute this thing. But first and foremost, it was Mahaprabhu's desire to fulfill his three internal desires in answer to the calling of Advaita Chari. And this he, he, has, he released all the moods of Vishnu Manu Nandini there in Navajit Dham, in the associates with Parika during Sankirtan After he had fulfilled all his desires, then he thought, now will be the time to also become absorbed in the moods of radical separation and also through these moods of this separation then this ragmar can be taught and distributed. Without Purva Rag, how can there be meeting? If the Sadak has never met Krishna, first you will have to cry and weep, you will have to develop some samanda, some separation. And then by that separation all his obstacles and narata, everything will be removed. Then he will he'll become purified, like gold if you put it into fire and you beat it, then it becomes pure. Get all the impurities out, you have to go through some process. <coughs> that is separation. So therefore Mahaprabhu then he went to South India to meet with Raya Ramana Raya. He did not take Nityananda Prabhu with him. And there, when he went to South India, <coughs> then he distributed Prem all over the South. And he planted the seeds there. <coughs> but this was only, this is like something Mahaprabhu is doing. But in reality, it is only later that through each and proof that Mahaprabhu then distributed all the fruits of Braj Prem everywhere. Meanwhile, each and proof, he was waiting. When is my brother going to call me? He was wandering here and there. He went to Prindavan. He was looking for Krishna. He was asking all the Gwaliyas, where is my Kanai? Is Kanai here? Kanai here? All he heard is Nai, Nai. No, he is not here. He is gone. He has taken, he is gone. He's taken birth in Navadip Dham. <coughs> then he came and he hid in the house of Nandana Acharya. <coughs> Mahaprabhu saw a dream <coughs> that a great personality and a great chariot had come to Navadip Dham. And then he ordered Haridas Thakur and Shivas Pandit. Go find. Haridas Thakur is Brahma. Shivas Pandit is Nada. They searched everywhere but they couldn't find. They said, therefore, they said that. Um, that Vinu um, Sada Sangha Vivekana Hoy, Rama Kipa, Vinas Sulavana, without Bhagavan's mercy, you cannot achieve Guru. Guru Krishna Prasari by Bhakti Vakati. You have to receive the Lord's mercy, then you will get the Guru. Therefore, ultimately, Mahaprabhu then he took them there, as we heard. Then, this beautiful meeting of Mahaprabhu and Chinanda took place. Everyone began to explain, oh, this is like Ram and Lakshman. Oh, they are like Ram. Bal Krishna and Baladeva, they are like Krishna and Arjun. Like this they began describing, a beautiful meeting took place. <coughs> and then, <coughs> there in Navadip, these pastimes took place with Nitya Nandapu, they relished Sankirtan Ras there, then Muthamali Mahaprabhu in Sanyas, he went to Puri, he did, went to South India everywhere. Then, after when he came back, then he, one day he called Nitya Nandapu. He said, if you become like a Muni, 
you become like a rishi sitting one place silent. Then how will the jivas of this age become any benefit? I have Raja Swantas. He said, "Then Raja Swantas is asking me, said that Kuru Hari Hari Brahma Mani San." I said, "If you return the request to his brother, oh, why don't you decide the by some means to deliver these jivas?" Then Mahapur he thought, "If I have a desire, and also this is my desire." Why Baladev did not know Mahabharata Jaya, Raag Mahar Bhakti Loki Kavita Prasanna? This is necessary. How will the Jeevas become attain this Braj Bhakti? Then Mahabharata said, don't be like a Muni. Don't be sitting here. I want you to go to Bengal. I want you to go everywhere. And I want you to distribute this plan. Then, along with his Gaurasa Gopal, then he started walking, performing Sankirtan. And they became so mad in his Sankirtan, they would sometimes walk on the right path, and sometimes for six hours they'll walk in the wrong direction. Then they'll look, where are we? We don't know. They'll ask. They say, oh, you've gone the wrong way. Go back. Then they again start walking back in the right direction. But after a few minutes, they again forget. Then they again go in the wrong direction. And after 20 hours of going in the wrong direction, again they will ask. They say, oh, you want to have 20 hours away from the Nando, right path. And again laughing and smiling and they'll again correct their path. This way, they were moving. And whoever they met, then they would give them friends. Even small children, you know, they would give them friends. And so he would go, they went to Panihasi. This is the place where Maha Vishnanipu ordered Raghunatha to distribute his Raj Rati. Why is Rati Manjari? Who is going to distribute his Raj Rati? That is Rati Rati Manjari Raghunatha. For three months, Vishnanipu and his social didn't eat anything, didn't drink anything. Day and night, they performed Nam Sankirtan there, in Raghava Pandi's house. And there, the Vijayananda's Abhishek was performed. Like yesterday we performed Abhishek, there they bought a beautiful Simhasan, put him on there, with a thousand pots of water and all his special ingredients, they worshipped Vijayananda food. Then Vijayananda said, bring me a Kadamba flower garden. He said, but now it is not season. Why Kadamba only comes in the beginning of the rainy season, June, July. Then he said, no, go check. Then he went and he saw that there was this, um, another tree, and on that, on lime tree, on a lemon tree, on a lemon tree, Kadamba flowers were growing. And they bought those flowers, made a garden of it in Nityananda. He was very, very happy. Then they could all smell the, fl- the fragrance of Damanaka flowers. And Nityananda was smiling. Can you smell something? They said, Yes, where is that coming from? And he said, Oh, Mahaprabhu is here. He's standing next to that tree and he's leaning and he's watching his Sankirtan, smiling. And the flower, and he's wearing a garland of Damanaka flowers. Then he said that through his glance, he began to start distributing gopi prayam. That prayam of the gopis described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that was distributed by Nityananda through that time. Even small children, he said that Nityananda Puru gave them prayam. And they would also for one month, they would not eat. They would run around here and there. The, tree, the children began uprooting trees. They would jump off trees. They would go and they were doing all kinds of things. Sometimes Nityananda would tie the children, bind them. Keep them next to him, so they wouldn't do any mischief. Sometimes he would let them run free. This way Nityananda was freely distributing his blood friends, his gopi friends, everyone. He said his different parikas, like Garadhar Das. He was in the mood of a gopi, he put a pot on his head, and a three four bending form, he said, who will buy my yogurt, who will buy my milk? The same Garadhar Das, there was one Kaji, he was very inimical. He went into the Kaji's house. Kaji was so inimical, he would kill Hindus, he would destroy their cars. When Garadha Das came there, he was shouting in the, in the night, Where are you? Come out of your room. Kaji was so angry, he came out. But then when he saw Garadha Das, he became completely chant, completely peaceful. And then he said, Chant Hari. And then he said, I won't chant Hari. Tomorrow I'll chant Hari. And Garadha Das began dancing very really wide. Oh, you have chanted Hari, you have chanted Hari. And this way, Abhinam Thakur. And others, all the Gaurasa Kupala are doing all extraordinary activities. And this way, Mithyananda Guru, through his associates, he began distributing this strength to everyone. Because it was Mahaku's order. Therefore, this is called Anugatya. Our Mahaku is the Bhajan Shikshi Guru of our Sampradaya. He is the ultimate Savya, uh, the Savya Vastu. We are worshipping him. Sri Kishna Chaitanya Radha Kishna Narayanya. We are following his guidance, following his instructions, without Mahaprabhu's permission, and how we can perform anything. 
Therefore, Mahaprabhu is giving his instructions to Nityananda, Nityananda is giving his instructions to his associates. This is how the parampara is running. One thing is, I will do seva, I will do this, I will do that, but without the mercy and instructions of Guru and Vaishnava, then how that seva ever be fruitful? Therefore, Janma Bhakti Sukhita in the Millions of births, you can do bhakti, so called bhakti. I am eating prasad, I am doing tulsi, darshan, harinam, this, that. But if you have no connection, you are not connected to Nityananda, not connected to Mahaprabhu, not connected to Guru Varga, then this Krishna Bhakti Ras can never be attained. So there in Chaitanya Bhagavad Gita, when the Thakur says that Nityananda he was distributing his frame Ras, his Krishna Ras to his plans. See how easily it is attained. Millions and millions of births are so busy, you jump over just by one glance of Nityananda Guru. Therefore, it was Mahaprabhu's desire. Then, Nityananda Guru distributed all these things at the right time when it was appropriate. Therefore, everything had its time and place. Nityananda Guru, he is the first servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When you want to serve Mahaprabhu, you'll have to serve through Nityananda Guru. If someone tries to serve Mahaprabhu without Nityananda Guru, then Mahaprabhu never gives them mercy. Rather, they'll be become destroyed. You've seen so many pastimes. Kabiraj Krishna, Kabiraj and brothers. Ramachandra Khan, he has insulted Nityananda Puru. And anyone who did not respect Nityananda Puru, then they will definitely finish. So, this way, Nithai, it is said, anyone who chants the name, the God Nithai, then Prem Bhakti will come searching for that person and he will enter into the heart of that person. Bhakti will describe described this in the Nityananda Puru. Therefore, one cannot worship God without Nithai. And one cannot worship Nithai without God. Therefore, these names together, we chant together, Nithai God. We serve these two brothers together. And ultimately, Panchatat Atmakam Krishna Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Sakyam Advaita Acharya Gadarat Pandit and Shivas Thakur. This Panchatatva, the absolute truth is manifested in these five pictures. Without their mercy, one cannot attain anything. Therefore, in the Gayatri Mantra, at the end of your Gayatri Mantra, you chant the Panchatattva Mantra. Why? Gurudev explains, because without their mercy, you cannot achieve any perfection. Nothing is possible without their mercy. Therefore, one will have to chant the Panchatattva Gayatri, the Panchatattva Mantra during your Gayatri. And after that, Harinam Mahamantra. In Kali Yuga, all angas of Bhakti will never give fruit without, if it's not associated with Harinam. Even Lakshmi Patitirtha, the Guru of Nityananda Puru, Nityananda Puru, he, he laid the foundation for Mahaprabhu's pastime. He said that when he was in Pandarpur or this place somewhere in the west, one day Lakshmi Patitirtha with all his disciples, he came, he met with Nityananda Puru. All night, day and night, they performed Sankirtan and, and Harikatha. And they had many, two together, they had many confidence, they had confidence in discussion. Then the next morning, Nityananda Puru left, and Lakshmi Patitirtha, he entered into Samadhi. That's it. In other words, Lakshmi Patitirtha, all his sadhan, all his bhajan, everything he performed, the fruit was what? He met with Nityananda Puru, Nityananda Puru gave him his prema, his Nityananda, his eternal bliss. Immediately he entered into Samadhi, he entered into the eternal path into the world. And then, Madhavendra Puri and Nityananda Puru, again they also they met. Many days they were discussing and embracing and experiencing all kinds of aesthetic symptoms. What happened, no one can only, Vrindavan Das Thakur described, only they know what was discussed. Then we know, after that meeting, then, then by Madhavendra Puri, mercy, Ishwara Puri part. And from Ishwara Puri part, then Mahapu. And this way, you can see this parampara is continuing. So Nityananda Puri laying the foundation. He's distributing this brush plane. He's making everything ready. So when Mahapu comes, everything is already smooth. And then Mahaprabhu to fulfill all of his desires. Therefore, he is the first and foremost Seva Kapitan in Mahaprabhu, and he is fulfilling all of his desires. So, praying to the lotus feet of Guru Parapatma and the Vaishnavas, we may always remain under the shelter. And that is our Mishta and our praying for Panchadatta Vishnanda may also enter into our heart. One chakra with the rest of the number of us.
now especially when this pastime coming into this world, then the jivas in this world will now like very generously be, be allowed or even by force even, like even if they don't want, you know, like then they get the chance to enter into this Navadi. Uh, to enter to have this chance to relish this gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So uh, if if we say Dr. Chan doing everything, then what is Mahaprabhu doing? Well, just like there's Shakti Shakti Matanabe, there's no Shakti if not for Shakti Man. Of course, Baladev is not Shakti, Baladev is Shakti Man. Now, it is said that everything is done by Shakti even. Now, Shakti Man is not doing anything. Then he said, like, like in Jai Dharma, he said that everything is done by Shakti. So then what is the what is the, the role, what is the work of Shakti, Shakti Man? So the Shakti Man is, he has all these desires. The desire is coming from Shakti Man. And uh, his Swaicha and Swatantra, he is fully independent. The Shakti only follows the desire of Shakti Man. Now, with Baladev, he is Shakti Man, but his mood actually is like Shakti. That's why he is he's Bhagavan himself, but his mood is I am Seva. And in, in this way, Bhagavan is showing the example of how it is to serve. That's why he is Akanda Guru Tattva. He is the very first principle, he is the complete principle of Guru, teaching the Divas how to serve. So, it is said that uh, now for all the jivas, like conditioned jivas, like me, I'm conditioned jiva. I don't know, you may not be a conditioned jiva, I cannot tell, but um, for the conditioned jivas, we have our very sp uh, specific, like, swaru. And it's not like the same for everyone. Some may have uh, rati uh, in, in Madhurya. And some may have Dasya, Rati, or like any of, any of the like five Ratis. So this Rati is like a container. According to, to your container, then you are you're able to accept like water. So if you have this Dasya Rati, then you can relish Dasya Rasa. You will later on when you attain Prem, and this Rati will be mixed with all the other ingredients, then you'll be able to relish this Melos of Prem. But now, in either Dasya Rasa, Sakya Rasa, Vatsalya, or Madhuya Rasa. So, when we talk about uh, Nityananda Prabhu, it is said that he is the very personification of this, uh, this Prem Rasa, of like, all this Rasa. Why? Because he's serving in all of this. And therefore, to all the Jivas, according to your Rati, then easily he can give you a he because he is the predominating shakti, a predominating deity of Sandini potency, the support, the adhara. So he can give you he can give you existence, a real existence. Really, and our real existence is in that world. So he can give you your, your spot there. Like right now we're able to sit here because there's space. So like like previously probably was asking why Lord Chananda before Mahaprabhu appeared, he not distributing the spring. Uh, like, and and when later, he was not even allowed by Mahaprabhu to, to come with him. Now, whatever the reason for that, that's because uh, Dr. Jananda has his services. When Mahaprabhu left, who will be there to like take care of the other associates of Mahaprabhu in Puri? And before, before Mahaprabhu came, actually Lord Chananda was preparing everything, like all the different places, he's preparing. Like before Krishna came, Baladev came in the womb of Devaki. Uh, and and then, then Krishna would come. So he is always there, he comes first and preparing the platforms. So in Mahaprabhu Lila, many things are like mystery, a very secret. Because Mahaprabhu very secret avatar, Lord Nityananda very secret, and therefore many things is difficult to understand. But by mercy of the Vaishnavas, then um, we are able to we get some understanding. So Lord Nityananda, 
when we hear this past times, he's distributing frames. Then that's according to the rati of like every like, jivas who are there. Some are actually nityasiddhas. So they're already perfected. But some are some are just like recipient of the mercy of of the Panchatatva. And and like as Ogasan mentioned, this is Lord Nityananda's mercy. He goes to that place where frame is not, not distributed. And then he distributes this. That's why you look, he's being criticized. Why he stays with sudras? Why he stays with all this like uh, so-called materialistic uh, goldsmith, this, this uh, you know, business people like this, tax collectors like this. But all he does really is uh, he is uh, distributing to them his frame. So in what way, uh, like we just heard very easily, uh, even from childhood, just making them absorb in the pastimes of Krishna. Uh, through all these different leelas, they're doing some drama, like this. But, but later on, by kirtan, just by kirtan, then everyone just become absorbed. Just even by looking at Lord Nityananda, immediately they become absorbed in Braj Lila. They sing. Oh, this, you know, some people who are not envious, then they become all sorts. Oh, they're saying like, like Baladev, uh, like covered voice, and with all his associates, then they become reminded of grudge. But those who are envious, or those who have that, that mood that, oh, I am devotee, and then, then they cannot reconcile, and they say, what kind of person is this? So, then they criticize Lord Chananda. So, this, uh, Lord Nityananda, he is giving according to the Jeevas Rati and all the rasa he is capable of giving. Even Madhurya Rasa. <laughs>